Hey everyone, welcome back. As always, I'm Sum. And I'm Cody, and this is Cody Sum, and we are the duo that does more than each other. I was like starting to breathe really loud. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, we are back, in, you're back with, in bed with Cody and Sum, and we are in our main bedroom again, and we're here to talk about something exciting, two years in the making. We finally picked a wedding venue. <laughs> finally picked a wedding venue. Um, so we did a vlog a few weeks ago and on our YouTube channel where we visited, I don't know what, five five venues? Yeah, it was like five. In Temecula. Yeah. We were going to do like eight, but we would have to come back for those a different day. But we found the one we liked the first day, so we didn't even see the we other ones. We didn't even come back. We yeah. didn't want to have too many options. Yeah, I don't want to get confused. But this was our first time looking at venues at all in the, the two years that we've been engaged. So if you are new to listening to us or, or coming to our page, um, we have been together for five years and we got engaged two years ago in Paris, I propose. Got down on one knee. August 11th, put 2022. The, put yeah. the ring on the wrong hand by accident. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was in Paris. So yeah, that was 2022. So now it's... Been two years later, we finally were like, okay, let's go look at some venues. Yeah, and then the wedding will be in two more years. And everyone's like, what is, the, why are you guys, like, taking so long? But, like, there's no taking rush. Taking our time. Really. Taking our time. We want it to have our, you know, our anniversary is October 3rd, so we want it to get married on October 3rd. So, you know, we found a venue that was available October 3rd, 2026, and that's a Saturday, so that is the date. Yeah, our anniversary for becoming boyfriends, which, of course, most of you are familiar with the Mean Girls, October 3rd, and it's also National Boyfriend Day. Yeah. A lot of times people don't know that, so that's why um, I asked him. And October in California is just, like, the best month to get married. You know, it's not hot, it's not cold, it's just right. Yeah, we're doing <laughs> peak season. It's considered peak season, and it's also on a Saturday, so... Yeah, peak day, peak season, so it was that, like... like it's going to be like 10,000 more than it would. Yeah, it was like, it's <laughs> like that expensive column on the sheet they give you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But That's it's fine. Okay. That's okay. It's been a long time coming. We we definitely took our time and we, even when we got engaged, we knew it was going to be, we weren't just going to get married in a year. We wanted to take our time. Yeah. And um, you wanted to like get inspired by little things along the way. and Yeah. You know, October 3rd, 2025 was an option. It is a Friday, but... Uh, one of the guys in our wedding, one of our best friends, it's his 40th birthday that day. And, you know, we didn't kind of want to take away from his whatever he's doing. So we're like, ah, what's one more year? And it's a Saturday. And, you know, I feel like everyone prefers to go to weddings on a Saturday because then they, they don't have to take off as much work. And yeah, um, so, you know, it just worked out. And, you know, yeah. I do have family flying across country and. You know, it gives them time to kind of like save up. You know, my brother has a million children, so he has to figure out how to like bust them all here in some way. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely giving everyone a lot of time yeah. to plan um, in advance. Yeah. And the soonest, yeah, the soonest we would have done it would have been that October 3rd, 2025, which would have been a Friday. Mm -hmm. So now it's a Saturday, like you said. So yeah. I'm excited. I wasn't in a rush. I was never in a rush. Yeah. But I think, you know, this year we got busy with doing the reality show and once that was done you know then it was summertime and then you know we we're just busy you know doing summertime stuff and then it was kind of like september i was like you know we should let's just go look at some venues let's yeah just start looking honestly i feel like we didn't look for such a long time because i you know my family my like my side of the family was kind of there were some deaths and people fighting and for the last two years, I wasn't really sure who the hell I would even invite out of my family because it was just kind of messy. So I kind of was just waiting for that all to die down and to see what relationships kind of lasted. And now that I can focus on the wedding and not have to worry about the family stuff, like it's I wanted to be excited to plan the wedding. So I wasn't in a rush to pick a date because I wasn't like excited to plan it yet because I, I was like... My family was so messy, you know, and you want them to be part of your day. So it's, yeah, it was mostly that bullshit too. There's yeah. a lot of reasons, honestly, why we waited as yeah. long as we did. So, yeah, so we waited, but now we got one and we had a great time looking. I thought it was going to be a stressful kind of experience, just like, like it was just going to, I thought looking at venues was just going to give us more to have to think about. 
you know, then all the, the costs were going to come into play and all the logistics and it was going to be fun, but like, oh my gosh, we have to do this, 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 and this. But I had a really fun day. Like it was yeah. fun looking at venues and I got really inspired and really excited versus yeah. being stressed out. My best friend who she'll be pretty much my maid of honor on my side, she flew in, you know, your older sister was with us and the four of us just kind of bopped around, looked at wineries in Temecula, drank a little, like it was, it was a very fun day. Yeah. Sure. And all the venues out there are beautiful. Yeah. Like not, not any of them I I would say are bad. And, and we only looked at five and there's, I don't know, there's tons of, of vineyards and stuff out there. So I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure they're all wonderful. Yeah. But we, 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 of the five we looked at, we found one that we really loved and we thought about it for a few days and we decided not to go back and look at any more venues. We decided it was the one. Yeah. So do you uh, want to tell them what it is? Which yeah. It it's uh Villa de Amor. It's in Temecula. You know, we, we really decided on the Temecula area cause we were able to one get a place that kind of was all exclusive. I feel like here in LA, a lot of the places are you bring in your own caterers, you bring in all your you know, separate vendors. And here you have the option to do that, but they also give you the options to select the venues that they've selected. Or, you know, we get like a wedding planner, we get a wedding coordinator. And I feel like out of all the places we saw, this one in my mind just flowed. Like I envisioned how the wedding would be moving throughout the day. And like, like the one place I didn't really like where the ceremony was, you know, it looked awkward. And like this one has two choices of where the ceremony can be. And this one has like two choices of where you could have dinner. And it just, I liked how each spe like, like part of the day is in a different spot. Like we were able to, the ceremony's here and then you go to cocktail hour and then you go to dinner and then you go to cutting the cake and you go to the dance area, like all different areas on the venue, like nothing, no like areas repeat it. You know what I mean? I thought that was kind of cool, and I never really saw something like that before. I've never, I've been to probably 30 some weddings, and I don't think I've ever been to a wedding where it kind of like changed like that. Yeah. Yeah. You've been to a lot more weddings than I have. I've, been I've probably been to like weddings. three or four. You've probably been to like 20. <laughs> I have not <laughs> you had been. A, you had to a lot of girlfriends. I will so. tell you, I have not been to a gay to wedding. To a gay wedding? Though. Yeah. I've been invited to one, and it was like during COVID, so we didn't go. But um, I, I printed off like some questions to kind of go through um this video and like the first one was what was the moment we knew villa via de de amore was the perfect venue for us and i mean you kind of just answered that right now for yourself i think for me i really knew it was the one when <laughs> i saw all those decorations in the back to choose from oh, they yeah. had a whole storage what would you call that uh, like a warehouse just of like just like storage units and storage units were rooms full of different types of couches uh linens yeah. like candles floral arrangements and they just had they're like there was just like hundreds of different styles and options to pick from that they're like you can come back here and work with the wedding planner and yeah. designer and the florist to customize whatever you want that's what's cool too and i was like wow know, all the all the weddings i've been to or even been in it's been girlfriends not boyfriends so it's like I've been, I had to see them go through this process and a lot of them like bought their own linens, like made their own centerpieces, like, and brought them at the day of the wedding. And in my mind, I like, don't want to do that. That's what I thought was going to be stressful. I was like, oh, we're just going to look at a venue today. And then we're going to have to start thinking about all these other things that we have to do. Yeah. And so with this venue, knowing that in a way, I guess it's just all included, you pay that yeah. premium price and then they just do it all for you. Or with you. You work with you, and it's yeah. just all part of it. Yeah. That was, I think that's when I was sold. <laughs> I pretty much, you know, I just, from what it sounds like, I have all these emails to answer, though, but it's in two years, so I'm, like, stressed to answer them right now. Yeah. Because I was like, what if someone comes in, like, you book you book it, you pay the deposit, and then all these people send you emails. They want this from you and this and this. You know, if you're the wedding coordinator, you have the florist, you have the photographer. And I'm just like, what if someone came and booked this a year prior, like, you need their emails like sooner. You know what I mean? I feel like I have a little time to like actually go through those emails and like answer them than being distressed to answer them all right now. Right now. Right yeah. now there's like a dozen emails in my mailbox I haven't responded to for the wedding. Yeah. But I was like, I got some time to do that. But it's like really cool because I feel like I we can just show her the colors we want 
we can show her this like a center like a picture of a centerpiece and then they can make it and show us and we're like yes or no yeah like i like that i like that i don't have to sit there and do it no and that gives us time to focus or you more time to focus on the little creative things we want to add to the wedding yeah so that will be fun yeah but honestly there's in my opinion from what i know and what i've seen i feel like there's not going to be tons that we really even want to add on because they do offer so much we even get like a taco truck at the after the reception which is i always loved weddings that had little like dessert cards after like the yeah. dance party's over or whatever like it's such a cool little well, i just addition. mean if you want to add like a fire show or yeah i don't need any fire <laughs> <laughs> no but i'm yeah. just you know you could focus on <laughs> we could focus on like say we want to do a dance you know like we want to learn how to uh do a specific dance. Well, yeah, um, like, like I want you and I, we'd pick our song yeah, and I want to take dance lessons. Yeah. Like a couple of months before. Yeah, stuff like, like that. I want to sing a song, so I do probably want to go to a vocal coach for that. Right, You know. right. Small stuff. Like now that this stuff's all being taken care of, you can free up your mental capacity to feel like you have time more for those yeah. creative things. And it even has like a DJ, which, you know, at first I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to go with the venue DJ, but... Wedding DJs are different than the DJs we want. So now the DJs that we want, we can use for our after party, you know? Mm, yeah. And that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Also for, uh, speaking of that, like now we can focus on, now that that's done, we can focus on, okay, for the afters with close friends or friends, um, you know, that want to come and stay up late, you know, getting that Airbnb or that second location yeah. that we're going to go, you know, that's kind of other stuff we'll have to think about. So. Yeah. Going to Temecula, a lot of fun. I love the way they do it. You just we just made some appointments and they just walked us through each venue and we got just got to see and ask all our questions all at once. Yeah. Like that just made everything so much easier than just looking online and making a phone call. So honestly, I think another thing that sold me on this venue was when we went into the office after the tour yeah. and he showed us photographs. Cause it was it's hard to envision everything with nothing set up. Because it's some, I mean, the venue is like pretty much grass with an arch. And you're like, I can't see it. But yeah. then when he shows a photo, I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, how are we dividing, how are we dividing the wedding planning tasks? I think because. I'm doing most of it and I just run it by you. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the, the agreement. <laughs> um, yeah. If you don't know us or haven't seen some of our other videos you know we've talked about this but since we started dating he always wanted to be proposed to and had more of a vision of the wedding i in his mind so i took care of planning a uh you know really romantic proposal like i said i proposed in paris on the seine with the whole setup with eiffel tower in the background so with the idea that I plan the proposal, he can take the lead on the wedding, which is what he wants to do. So, I mean, of course, like I'm going to be involved in the whole process and help yeah. out. The one thing the I think way. I might make you in charge of is finding like where you want to do the like finding the rehearsal dinner spot and booking that. Like that might be your like only thing. Done. <laughs> easy. Um, easy. Easy. Yeah, I'm going to be involved, but I'm just going to let you take the lead. Yeah, that's kind of our that's kind of our process. I know everyone does it a little bit differently. Yeah. But and the thing with the rehearsal dinner, too, which I don't even think we talked about, is it's probably be better. We can find a block of hotels. And if that place has a spot for rehearsal dinner, that's perfect. Like where everyone's staying, that's where we eat. Right. Yeah. What are, what's one detail of the wedding that we're really excited about? Let's see. One detail. I mean, I don't know. I'm excited about the whole thing, but. I think I think just the after party part uh, is. Cool. I think you should be excited to sing a song. I'm excited to sing a song. It's something I've always like dreamed about doing is singing at my singing wedding. Singing a romantic but song to your partner. At the wedding. It's also like we got some judgy friends, so it's like nerve wracking too. True, you gotta so, step it up. Yeah, so that's ex that's as like scary. It can't as, be winged. It can't exciting. be winged. It's yeah. not like karaoke. Yeah, like if I don't if I don't go to a vocal coach and get it all figured out, like I won't do it. You know. Yeah. Definitely, because I don't need that sort of stress on my wedding day. <sighs> um, yeah, I'm excited to, let's see. I mean, I'm always excited for the food. <laughs> yeah, the food looks really good um, from what we saw. Yeah, so. the food does look really good. That stuff, we have to we have to like plan a testing day and like go do all that stuff. They, it's like 
every Wednesday or one Wednesday a month or something. You know, I I think I'm really excited about is planning like um um a mutual bachelor party together. Yeah. Like I think that's, you know, our our closest friends and our friends that are in the wedding are so supportive and and love both of us and and I think that having all of them together in one spot um, the closest people that it, we've we've gotten to know through our relationship, like that's going to be really fun. Well, at this point, you know, we most of our friends we met together, and the few that we didn't were close to. So instead of having two separate bachelor parties, we're gonna have two bachelor parties. One where it's like, you know, more for the gay crowd, and one for the you know the straight siblings who want to celebrate with us too. You know, we want to give the option of all sorts of diverse extracurricular activities. Yeah, so we're going to go to PV <laughs> with the gays, and we're going to go to New York with the straights. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we're yeah. going to have two, but they're going to both be together. Yeah. Um, what are non-negotiables for your wedding day, babe? Um, I mean, open bar. It's going to be open bar. It has to be open bar. No traditional wedding music that you hear, like, cotton eye joe or something yeah like we are family yeah like, i don't need, i don't need to I don't, don't like stop believe i don't like most of my family I, I, so but i don't not. need like don't stop believe in all those yeah. i just want don't stop believe in. it's not bad i don't know <laughs> I've heard too many times Glee we need to discuss um, um also non-negotiables i don't want you know that episode of friends where ross is like doing the bagpipes and they're like no like it's a surprise for their wedding like, I don't want yeah. anyone doing that sort of stuff. I don't want anyone getting up to, sh- like, do something special that they did for us. You know what I mean? No, yeah, I don't want that either. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. For, um, but I don't think anybody would do that, especially if they know who know me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that I think would be all my non-negotiable. I mean, I guess I don't have too many. I'm kind of going to go with the the flow like i said and let you take your lead on it i mean we both wanted plated versus buffet we're not yeah. doing a buffet so we're is doing that, plated uh, I don't, um, is that weird because i we talked to another group of, or two of our friends who just got engaged and they were like we want a buffet i think it's just preference yeah i think it's just preference. i always looked i don't even know i always like was thought the buffet i always thought the plate was like classier i, I like know. i like the plated because ideally they're gonna bring it to you so Right. Yeah. Each table doesn't have to get up and you don't have to wait yeah. for your table to be called. Yeah. Um, you know, so they're just gonna come out and serve so everyone can just get drunk and then get, get their food. And then if they're still hungry, we'll have a t- we're gonna have a taco truck later yeah. on. So it's not like we need a buffet because Nobody's, unlimited food. Nobody goes to a wedding like wanting to stuff their face. Some people do. I'm sure. I they mean, do. I've not that's never something. I mean, I don't know. I haven't been to a lot of weddings. Um all right, so how are we going to prepare for last minute surprises or changes? I don't really know at this point. I guess since we're two years out, but um, I mean, I feel like any last minute surprise or change isn't going to really matter. This is a very professional venue, so if it would have like, something to do with the venue, they, you know, I think they have B, C plans in place. So I'm not worried of that. I mean, cancel guests, whatever that's going to happen. Um, and yeah, there's nothing else really. I think since the venue's so involved you know, they're helping coordinate everything, that's going to make less hiccups happen rather than us having to yeah, communicate with each really, vendor separately. Honestly, I think we picked this place too because I really feel like they are just going to just, like I don't, I feel like I'm going to walk in there and not have a worry at all. You yeah. know? Because they're all, love. they're all tied to that venue. So yeah. they all are they've used all, to working together. They've all worked that venue. Yeah. They've done so many weddings there. Like, I just, I, uh, we're the only wet. They only do one wedding a day, so like it's yeah. I just feel like it's gonna go f- yeah. move very. Oh, and it also easily. came. Another thing it came with was the photographer, which I loved. Yeah. Um, which we have to I pick. liked. I like. They. That's I liked. two of the emails. They both email me, and we have to like select one. Yeah, the emails we've gotten. I because I see them too. It's like the photographer, which one we're picking. The caterer needs to know what kind of food we want. The designer. The designer. The wedding coordinator. To pick dates to come out there and yeah. yeah. So it's just, but it's all stuff we have so much time for. Like I'm happy that they're all yeah. emailing now. Yeah. But now we can um, just take our time. Yeah. And and honestly, in the next few weeks, I want to start answering some of these emails yeah. and going through it. But I mean, a lot of the questions, it's like too early to know some of the answers. 
you know, mm. like we still have to, we honestly have to sit down and, and finalize the guest list. Oh, that was my next. The next question <laughs> is who's on our dream guest list and how did we decide to invite? And uh, we haven't, we haven't got decided to yet. List. This venue, we always we always figured we'd invite like 200 just because we do have a large group of friends. And this venue seats up to 225 and that includes us. Yeah. 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 225 that includes us so you know it leaves a little wiggle room if people if everyone accepts and we need to add some extras but honestly the the close like the more and more as the days go on i was like maybe we should just invite 150 but honestly it really depends we have to really sit down and figure it out honestly i'm gonna be better at nixing people than he is because he started yeah. naming off like what about this i was like well, no i was I like i named i gave i wrote a list of every he wrote a list of everybody possible person that we would have ever invited just so that i had the name down and i wasn't forgetting somebody and we can officially say no right or yes because you know we've gotten drunk so many times and meet someone and we're like yeah come to wedding you know we drunkenly invited so many people to no, our you have that you have <laughs> too we, i mean i'm probably gonna do it tonight uh, like we get drunk and invite people to our wedding and then you know set us I have up not for done this failure yes <laughs> um well i yeah uh, someone someone brought up someone that i was talking i can't remember who it was but you know they had gotten married like a year ago they're like just think like you have to talk with every person that's there. You you want to make time for every person that's there. So that was the guy, the what the guy, the wedding venue owner. He got married at his, that wedding venue. Yeah, and he told us that. Yeah, so he's like, you know, the more people you invite, you know, you're gonna only have like thirty to forty five seconds with each person, and you want that to count. And then someone else said, or maybe I just thought of, I was like, you know, if it's not someone that I would go to lunch with right now and want to catch up with, then maybe it's not someone. I need to just inv in invite to the wedding, yeah. you know, and if it's not someone I've talked to in the last year, maybe that's also a qualifier, you know, we're, we'll go through. And yeah. I think that that'll be, if I, if we're going through the list for me and it's like, I wouldn't even want to have lunch with this person right now yeah, um, because I don't care that much to catch up with them. Then, then I it must not be a good fit to, to have them come to the wedding. Yeah. There's I'm fine. If, I'm fine. If it's just a hundred really amazing, awesome people that are there to rage and cheer us on i feel like we'll definitely have like we'll send our invites and then i'm gonna have like a b list you know if we have space then we can invite these people too so the guest list is the guest list is probably gonna be the most stressful part for us. yeah it is <laughs> that's probably the one thing we'll fight about i mean i you know, i think fight about i'm actually looking forward to you to like saying no to people just to ease my mind yeah like I need, like that's something I need from you. Like I'll do everything. I just need you to say no to, s s like the guests for me. Because I, I, I don't need anyone. I don't need anyone that's gonna, you know, have any sort of judgment, any sort of pickiness. And if it's not someone that I think is just like gonna fully like rally and rage and just be like so amped and excited to be there, like yeah. I, I like I said, I would rather have a hundred, a hundred fifty people that are just like amazing, awesome. Mm -hmm ready to you know be at 100 for us all night rather than 225 yeah. like people that are like what do 70%. they say you 75 percent of your invites come is it something like that someone said that too they're like yeah. you know just just things come up and people that have rsvp just for whatever reason they're like planned for like a 20 percent drop off yeah honestly 45 you know, days out which makes sense over the last year or so i've cut so many family members out that i was going to invite but even the like dozen that I am inviting, I honestly still see the those few backing out. It is a long trip, one, and it, it is an expensive trip. So I like I understand that. And I don't come from a very wealthy family, so you know it's it's gonna it it's like gonna probably be anyone in Pennsylvania that I invite. It's probably gonna be almost like a vacation for them, like their summer vacation, pretty much. Right. You know. So, and I do understand that, but I'm still gonna invite. Them. right yeah, yeah 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 i think i think that that's like th those people are, are good to invite even if you think that they can't make it yeah. just kind of like i know my brother and his four kids and his wife like that's going to be a very big expense for them it'll probably be like their trip of the year kind of that's why they've had four years to plan it yeah 
And I was like, no more kids in the next two years. <laughs> uh, <laughs> most of my family lives here. And if you've watched, again, watched our other videos, you know, I was raised Mormon. So most of my extended family is Mormon, all my aunts and uncles and my grandparents. But my dad and my stepmom are not. And my siblings are all not mormon anymore so you know i i mean they definitely of course are all supportive and want to come but i run into like since we've been engaged and come to f family gatherings over the holidays like my mormon aunts and uncles are like oh my gosh you guys got engaged like when's the wedding are we going to be invited we want to come and so i didn't think that i would invite them just because i didn't want to invite people that don't um you know, they, they don't believe in the validity of our marriage, but, yeah. but I do also want to promote change and growth and, and be able to promote positive change. So if I can put them in an environment where they get to see all this and it, it changes their perspective a little bit yeah. and they're asking to come, which means that they are being supportive. Like, it's not like I'm like shooting out an invite that they didn't ask for. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I, that's what I had got to decide too. Cause and of course I can't invite all of them cause there's so many, but maybe there's like yeah. five or six that yeah. I would invite well, cousins and are Mormons, Mormons allowed to dance. Yeah. Okay. Mormons are allowed well, to so, dance. you know, I have, I have a very religious, <laughs> they just don't, they won't drink. I have a very religious side of my family. I don't know their exact religion. If it's, um, they're like almost Pentecostal, um, but you know they have they wear long skirts and don't wear jewelry and they don't they're not allowed to dance. No, so I didn't know that until my brother's wedding a few years ago. They did come, and uh, I remember my cousin. She's older. Her her like younger son was dancing, and he was like I yelled at, and I was like, "What are you doing here then?" You know, that's interesting. And you kind of just go to the ceremony, eat the food, and maybe you should just peace out because you're gonna sit there and watch everyone dance. I don't know. It's just, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to bite them because, you know, they've made comments over the years of like, oh, we like aren't against your love or whatever, but we just don't think y'all should get married, like stuff like that. So yeah. it's just like, well, then you don't need to be involved in that. And day. if my Mormon family had ever said anything like that throughout our relationship, then it'd be no question. I wouldn't have any sort of second thought of no, okay, no, I'm not inviting them, but yeah. they have been, and you, you know, you've been there. They, yeah. any time we're around, it's always like, Hey, how are you guys? Oh, like there's very, never, there's never nice. any backhanded comments or compliments or, or jabs or things that make me feel like, Oh wow. They're just like tolerating Do you think or they don't actually support our relationship. Like everything is shows support and then yeah. asking to come and being super excited that we got engaged. Yeah. Like, but that's I'm like, okay. I love your family. They've, all, the always, Mormon ones always about. treated me with kindness. Yeah. But I also from like dating you and learning more about the Mormon faith. It's like I also feel like that sort of stuff is said behind closed doors. Like I feel like the Mormon thing is to always put up your best face forward, even if it's like some, not something you believe in kind of like smile. Like, do you think that they say stuff like, you know, to each other? I think some of them do. I think the ones that I'm referring to, like they wouldn't ask to come to the wedding and then say yeah. something behind our backs. Yes. In in um, you know that that good that uh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? I don't know. They yeah they wouldn't they wouldn't they would show support and be nice, but then they would just be like, oh that's so nice you got engaged great. Yeah. But then they wouldn't ask about when's the wedding and can I come? Yeah. You know, that that that's where um I get what you're saying. But then Yeah. And then also my sister who talks to some of them more than I, you know, would have said something to yeah. me. Yeah. I feel like my my religious side, they're all like I will always have love for them. They will always treat me with respect. But I just no, they just feel a huge disgust about my life. Like, I just know that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And as much as I do love them, and honestly, out of all the family members, when it comes to, like, who, uh, like, memories and who I've had good times with and who I, like, actually love the most, they are up there as people. But, you know, it's a time, there. this is something way more past that. And it's, I just can't look past how you feel about my wedding like that's just something i can't get over you yeah. know so i don't feel like you need to be part of it but it's also not, exactly it's exactly. also like it would be uncomfortable if you were there so it's like out of respect for your beliefs out of respect for my life 
like we can just respect each other, appreciate each other. Like you don't need to be, I know you don't want to be involved in that day and I don't want you to be involved in that day. And we, it doesn't mean I hate you. And no, yeah, we can. It's like, why do you, exactly. Yeah. We want to have people there that support us hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. And like on my mom's side, for example, there's, she had 11 siblings. So there's, you know, like eight of them that I know are nice in person and mm-hmm. say stuff behind closed doors like you're referring to so the ones i would invite are like my mom's one sister and a couple cousins that i grew up with that you know we've been around mm-hmm. that, those are the ones kind of yeah. i'm referring to but i definitely do have a lot of aunts and uncles that do what you're talking about which is nice you have 11 and they're all the same mom and dad right yeah my mom is one of 11 but that's like adopt it step half like you know it literally out of yeah. all of them well i lost my the one was my gay uncle who we lost and I actually think some of the step who I wasn't close to have also passed away. But literally out of all the rest, literally one aunt I'm inviting. <laughs> That's one. what I'm thinking. One I'm thinking of like two or three, you know? Yeah. Um, between my mom and my dad's side. Yeah. So actually also fun, not fun fact, but another fact, my, my biological grandpa, after he divorced my grandma, you know, had the 11 kids and then went and married another woman and had another like seven. That's insane. <laughs> I know. Um, okay. So let's see. I, I feel like, let's see. The one other question I had was how do we see our wedding reflecting our relationship? But I mean, I mean the yeah. most thing, That's the last one I got the most close there. The, the one thing that will reflect the relationship is everyone knows we love Taylor Swift and we are trying to incorporate a lot of Taylor music. Like that's the one thing I, a vendor I want to bring in. Like I want to, I don't know if it's going to be a string quartet or what I'll figure it out, but we do want the preset, like the procession, the ceremony. We want it to be all like instrumental versions of Taylor music. Mm. Yeah. So like, that's something we have to figure out. That's not something they, they'll offer. Honestly, if worse comes to worse, I can get a CD or the digital versions of the quartet music for the DJ to play. You know, worse comes to worse. I I'm I have no doubt you're gonna figure out some really cute Taylor Swift stuff to do. So yeah. it's so. just a matter of honing in on which ones. Yeah. Um. I think the wedding is gonna be just a celebration it's going to be seven years together when we get married mm-hmm. and which uh you know seven is one of my lucky numbers and i just think it's so cool to have seven years of memories um celebrations and and things we've done with family and friends and that have shown so much love and support over the years and then to just get everyone in one room mm-hmm. and get to celebrate that yeah. like i just I just am super excited yeah, for that. Yeah, it's nice because, you know, I have been to weddings where people meet and they're married like less Within than a year. year and it's and like... The in-laws nobody, are meeting at the wedding. Nobody knows you know? each other yeah. and, you know, there's no cute stories and I just feel like that's something we're going to have now. And I like that. I agree. Sure. So. Yeah, that's why I was fine with a three years before we got engaged and I was fine with a two to three year, now it's going to be four, but engagement... Yeah. And I think I think it's just gonna we're over the next two years we're gonna have more memories yeah. and things that happened and you know maybe some trips with our families that we get to kind of have yeah so. for sure. All right, well this has been in bed with Cody and Sumner. Thank you guys so for listening, for hanging out in bed with us. RBS. If you have any questions about our wedding, don't ask. You know, comment below. If you have any recommendations, you know, a good string quartet that's not too expensive in the Actually, california area and then yeah <laughs> comment on how you decided on your guest list yeah. how strict should we be yeah what are what are some things we should use to kind of decipher who should be there and who should not? you know mary on on selling sunset has 60 people at her wedding i know you know and i always thought when i say 200 i'm like i didn't think that was a big wedding if everyone's like whoa that's a huge wedding i'm it just like is. i know let's just do 100 people yeah no, I don't think that's okay. gonna be ha- happening. But <sighs> that means fifty people with guests. Like that's I don't know. I think our family's only gonna be fifty. All right. Well, yeah. that's all. Thank you. Bye.